live by the gun or you die by the sword. Welcome to The Good, The Bad, and The Weird. I'm Nico. And I'm Chris. And we are back at it with our third spotlight, I think. Maybe. Yeah, but oh boy, has it been a doozy. It's been very fairy tale like we could say. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, uh, when we started looking into Shrek, we, we came across the weird realization that Shrek in and of itself is a gritty fairy tale movie. And then that led us down a very long discussion over two definitions. What is gritty and what is a fairy tale? Mm -hmm. And how do those two things come together to create a very strange but well-loved subgenre? Yeah, because, I mean, there's, well, loved by some people. Uh, oh, good, good distinction. I know many people who absolutely hate this entire genre in its entirety. Yes, and so uh, part of part of what we were trying to decide with this was, first off, what was a fairy tale? Because there was a lot of movies we were coming across that kind of bridge the line, but yeah. aren't really there. And I think for me, like for me personally, a uh, the distinction I was able to come up with between and uh, there were like. Th four different categories I said. Mm -hmm. uh, I had folk tales, fairy tales, legends, and urban legends. Yes. Where mine come from, here, my, the distinction I came up with was legends are arguably based on real people. Okay. Like uh, Paul Bunyan. Exactly. Or Hercules. Or who is that guy with the Johnny Appleseed? Yes. He had a pot on his head. <laughs> um, folk tales are potentially real people and events but are distorted by time and just retellings. And mm -hmm, so, therefore, mm -hmm. urban legends fall into this. Okay. More, and I would say urban legends, arguably a little bit newer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see it. Same with, uh, well, creepypastas to a point. It depends on how old the creepypasta, I would argue. And what it's about. Yes. Um, and then fairy tales that are complete works of fiction. Okay. I see where you're, I see where you're going there. I threw in an extra one for this because I kept running, especially once I started trying to find movies that fit this, mm -hmm. uh, I threw in another one. A fairy tale also can't be a mythology. And a yes. mythology to me is at some point, someone could argue they worship something amongst the mythology part. Mm -hmm. So Zeus. It, granted, maybe nowadays not so much, but at some point, arguably someone worshipped it. Not a fairy tale. Yeah, so... That also, unfortunately for me, X'd off most of the um, Nordic mythology, mm -hmm. which, because most of it's so broken up, to me felt and read like fairy tales, but, I, you know, it did put itself right back into that mythology category. Yeah, and that's why I didn't really deep dive into some of it, uh, just like, especially the tales themselves, because... Sure. I started reading a, a book called Scandinavian Folk and Fairy Tales by, or compiled by Claire, Claire Boss. Okay. And she had a good definition as well that uh, I think aids to what we're going to talk about today. Um, in the book, she states, It is true of fairy tales in general, and truer, truer of them than of folk tales, that goodness is rewarded and evilness is... And evil is punished. The dictionary distinction between folk and fairy tales is that fairy tales usually involve supernatural beings and are never true, whereas folk tales handed down through the ages may possibly have been based on true occurrences. Yes. And I would argue that that little bit in there where she talks about um, magic or magical beings being mm -hmm. involved, I do think that especially for the movie genre... It does, that is the part that kind of distinguishes this from other very similar mm -hmm. subcategories or retellings. Yeah. And uh, no, I, I agree with that. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it was a horror. I mean, there's a lot of up in the air as like I was reading through like other definitions 
they were all kind of along the same lines of what we've talked about. Mm -hmm. But there were always, like, criticisms of, like, well, what about this one or two one-off stories? And it's like, sure. well, I mean, th it's the in-between. It's like how they talk about in Serial Killers, where we used to have uh, the product and the process killer, and now we realize those exist, but there's a blend in between. Some people like killing, and then they like playing with it afterwards. Yes. To different degrees. And then the other thing that you and I kept running into quite a bit was the problem of do fairy tales translate from other cultures super well? Mm -hmm. And I think the answer we came up with was not really. No. Not in the way that we're defining it anyway. If I think if we broadened our definition, we could. But for the purposes of getting movies into a subcategory, it was kind of an awkward line of, well, where does the mythology meet urban legend meet mm -hmm. fairy tale and without fully being immersed in that culture we didn't know where that line sat yeah and so for this um or for this spotlight we are specifically looking at more european fairy tales think disney ish because i gritty I'm, yes because honestly uh, I, I I I watched a couple Disney ones. I watched uh, Into the Woods. Oh yes. And yes, though it's a fairy tale, I arguably will say it's not gritty. And I would agree with you for the movie version of mm -hmm. it. And let's be real, that's probably how most people are familiar with that musical is the movie-vised version. It's fun. It's a good watch if you haven't seen it. It's a little long in my opinion, but I think the grittiness. The reason it shows up on a gritty uh, fairy tale list, if you were to Google one, is because the stage version is a little more bare bones, is a lot more up to the imagination, mm -hmm. and it's also not quite so crammed together feeling as the movie version. So I would agree. But again, we're just looking at movies, not stage versions mm -hmm. today. And then that gets us to our other point of trying to define what gritty meant. I still haven't got a strong definition here, just because gritty, to me, I never could put it to words. It's just a feeling. Yeah, and so that was one of the things I came across was um, gritty from dictionary.com referred to it as uh, realistic and uh, kind of a rough around the edges sure. movie. But... I don't particularly like that. I have started, I kind of fell to the other side and I'm thinking more of, like how we talked about exploitation films. It's mm -hmm. more about a perception. Yes. Because a gritty movie for me is definitely not a gritty movie, or most people wouldn't see it as a gritty movie. They might see it as just this gory mess of a movie. Yeah, and I can see where... My definition of a gritty movie could be interpreted as just mm -hmm. a bad movie. Bad filming technique, bad setting, yeah. bad acting. But somewhere between those two extremes is kind of where we're focusing today. Most of these movies fall into a similar vibe. And that usually involves a color palette and tone to mm -hmm. the movie. And I think for gritty fairy tales, which that's the key to this subgenre is it's those two things put together mm -hmm. is it still has the arguably morals and outcomes of the fairy tale while taking either a more realistic approach or a more cynical darker humored and then usually a color palette to go with it mm -hmm. sort of approach generally lots of beiges and blacks and something else that usually i see in these ones mud everywhere everyone's dirty Everyone is filthy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we are all filthy regardless, so... It it brings up the lines from Monty Python to my head. How do you know he's a king? Because he he's ain't got king. shit all over him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, with this, a uh, few of the movies we went over... Uh, I personally went over Red Riding Hood, mm -hmm. Snow White and the Huntsman, um, Jack the Giant Slayer, and what was the other one? Pretty sure I went over one other one, but I did not write them down. Now, we should also make one quick caveat. The Jack the Giant Hunter and Slayer combo. Jack the Giant Killer. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, I I had mentioned to this to you a long time ago, and this was part of the reason why I brought this topic up to you in the first place. I, a long time ago, had run into this movie, 
thinking that it was the big box office movie that I had missed in theaters because I refused to go. Mm -hmm. I was very excited to watch it. Please note, these are two very different movies. Yes. (laughs) And one is significantly better than the other. (laughs) And neither of them are good. Well, I learned there are two Jack the Giant Killers. There are. There's an older one, which I did not get around to. I also haven't seen it. It's not high on my list from the the bits I have seen, the stills and stuff. Um, But if you ever get around to finding and getting your hands on that super awesome B-rated Jack version... You know, if you make it through, you'll be one of at least three people who have seen this movie. It's on Amazon right now. Oh, it's 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 a struggle to get through. Yes, yes, it is. And it's uh, a dedicated watch. I apologize now for those of you who watch it. mm -hmm. And that was another thing we uh, well, another thing we had to uh, decide to back to our definition is age of things. Age of things also played into it because at some point, legends. Urban legends turn into just legends, mm-hmm. which then could arguably turn into folk tales, which then arguably could turn into fairy tales. Yeah. So I think most of these, with the exception of a couple that are a little bit more um, original concepts, mm-hmm. most of the movies I found come from much, much older, usually German and English legends and folk tales and fairy mm-hmm. tales which have reached the point of so old that they're kind of free game for anybody to interpret yeah um kind of, i mean a lot of like the lovers lane stories or the hookman stories sure sure i mean they pro- they might have been based off something but we don't we're not 100 percent sure yeah and same with like bloody mary we don't we we vaguely know what mary it, it could have been but the, let's be real. Mary was a very, very popular name. Mm-hmm. So, eh. Hopefully you can see the conundrum. Every, everyone can understand the conundrum we had in defining this crap. However, one movie, above all others, mm-hmm. stood out as kind of our shining example of what a gritty fairy tale was. Mm-hmm. And that is Brothers Grimm. Yes. And so, with a very rough, actual worded definition... What we can do is hold Brothers Grimm up on a little pedestal as the saint child of this subcategory, and then ask ourselves as we watch other movies, does this movie feel like Brothers Grimm? And this is where it got tricky for me, because mm-hmm. to me, Brothers Grimm, definitely a fairy tale. I mean, it's about the Brothers Grimm. Yeah, and it's and that's the thing, too, is this one is about multiple fairy tales. Yes. Had a bunch of them all in there, and they're all definite fairy tales. Mm-hmm. Um, there's mud everywhere. The color palette's a nice dark gray. And on top of all of that, while it comes close to a horror film in certain scenes, it is most definitely not a horror film. And that was another caveat we had, is it could not be a horror film because that was too easy. It, it is too easy, and it's also not gritty. Because yeah. while you can have a gritty horror fairy tale... You can't really, you know, square is a rectangle backwards logic here. Yeah. So it was kind of fun for you to come over to my desk and tell me all about movies that you thought, and then me go, nope, that's a horror movie. (laughs) Yeah. Because there are a lot of horror fairy tale movies. That's a pretty big topic. Mm Mm-hmm. And Google knows me too well, so of course everything (laughs) I get suggested is horror. Yeah, you got an incognito for this one, unfortunately. But this is kind of the weird problem that I had with it is I'm a huge book reader and gritty fairy tale books are everywhere Mm -hmm. especially the young adult section which honestly should just be called the adult section that's more fanciful than the other adult section but that it's it's huge there's countless um movies and or I shouldn't say movies books and it's even worked its way into our video games a good example is wolf among us we're I'm all, not familiar with that one. I think you've probably seen the art for it. It all of the characters are based off of fairy tale creatures like Big Bad Wolf or okay. Three Little Pigs. I think it had some other sequels potentially. Hmm. I don't know. I only played the first one. It was really fun. It's storybook esque. Uh, Little graphic novelly. It's kind of a choose your adventure dialogue sort of game. Yeah. I liked it. Okay. Well, and I mean, that was one thing we found, too, is not just books, but TV shows are where the gritty 
fairy oh. tales thrive. And like we've seen kind of a resurgence recently, or I shouldn't say recently. We just went over a hump of resurgence with these, and mm-hmm. I think we're tapering off now. But I remember back when we were in high school, there was another resurgence of this genre. So, Arguably, Supernatural brought the onset of this, I would say. I would say they definitely popularized it, but I would say Grimm was by far, like, the shining child of this category. Hmm. I'm not. I, I don't watch TV shows. I know you don't watch them as much either, but I know your husband does. And so do my in-laws, and I think they watched every single episode of Grimm. Thus, I have seen a couple episodes of Grimm. I did really like it. It is just fairy tales put into the real world. I think you would like Grimm. Okay. Well, now that you have so much free time. <laughs> so, uh, I'm still bit really busy. <laughs> um, no. Supernatural had bits that yes, were fairy tale. That I, but I, I, it towed the mythology line. It did, and I will say, but Supernatural brought that gritty feeling to it TV. It definitely did. Because before that, we had stuff like uh, Charmed and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yes, which but, that's kind of an awkward line, too, with vampires. Because mm-hmm. uh, part of the fairy tale nest was there needed to be a lesson learned. Mm-hmm. And I would argue that the lesson of don't be a vampire, is a shitty lesson. Well, and I think mainly vampires were just, they they were more of a folklore, kind of like how we talked about in uh, Japanese mythology and uh, folk tales is they're so intertwined that we can't really separate them. And so once we hit the vampire topic, we had, of course, to move over to the Mary Shelley topic of Mm -hmm. Frankenstein. And I think we both agreed that while Frankenstein is getting very close, he's still too young. Yes. Same with, like, Dracula. Dracula is too new of a story. Yeah. So I think we will definitely get there. I I would argue that Dracula will get there first. Mm-hmm. We are moving that way. I would say we haven't hit there just yet for me to put him in this category. Also, I do have my own subcategory of vampire. So I kind of put them all over there. Yeah. No, that's... It's a clear distinction. I mean, we got... Vampire movies is a specific one. Oh, for sure. Um, But other thing that I kind of wanted to bring up is the retelling of these tales. Like, the movies themselves aren't straightforward, those stories. No. There's always a little bit of a twist to them. And the one thing that I came across is... Generally, fairy tales are meant for children. Yeah. And more so the peasant class to teach them where their place was back when they were... Back in the day, yeah. we have since, you know, degored the fairy mm-hmm. tale to make them children appropriate. Yeah, because most of the ones we're, we we mentioned, we've they're PG-13 or higher. Yeah. So... However, I would argue most of the ones that definitely fell within the category mm-hmm. were either... Adult retellings of tales that have now been retold to be appropriate for children. Think all of the grim fairy tales. While we have the originals, Mm -hmm. the ones that all of the kids' books have are all of the less terrifying versions. Yeah. And then another good example of this genre is the newer movie, Maleficent. Granted, I have not seen the second one, but the first one for sure. Okay, that's one of the ones I didn't get to. And I, the reason why Maleficent is on the list for you since you haven't seen it, Mm -hmm. is mostly because the fairy tale is the same fairy tale, but it's from the point of view of the bad guy. Yeah. Which arguably just makes a fairy tale more Mm adult-themed. And that's kind of what I found with most of the ones that I could say, yes, most definitely is in this gritty category, was the story was never changed, but details... Um, the graphicness of it or just the overarching theme would be shifted Mm -hmm. to fit an adult audience as opposed to a children-friendly audience. Yeah, and that's the one thing I saw too was, because I've seen screenshots of Maleficent, it's a much brighter movie too. It is, but I would argue that that is the Disney shining through. (laughs) Yes, and oh boy does Disney... uh... Disney, I think arguably... Wanted to lead the way with Gritty Reboot, but it can't undisnify itself. Which mm-hmm. is why the new live-action Beauty and the Beast 
gets really close to mm. it. But again, it's got just a little bit too much Disney in it for me. However, a friend of mine would argue that it is definitely gritty by her standards. Yeah. Mostly because plague. <laughs> So Ugh. she would put it in the gritty category, but under the umbrella of I like it. Yeah. And see, that that's the thing, though, is gritty is such a spectrum. It is. Because rewatching these, I could see why people would think they're gritty. But for me, they're just kind of... Monochrome? I mean, I don't see color very well to be good. Uh, you know what I meant. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I mean, and that that's the thing is... I think it comes down also to the writing of, like, why these movies aren't ma mostly well received. Because Brothers Grimm, arguably not critically praised, no. but has a cult following behind it. Definitely a cult uh, following. Sleepy Hollow, very much the same. Disappointingly, vein. the same vein. Yeah. And I would even argue same vein for both Sleepy Hollow, the um, Tim Burton version. But also Sleepy Hollow, the Disney's um, Halloween mm -hmm. animated version. It only it has a huge following, which is why Disney hasn't you know swept it under the Disney rug. Yeah, but they only bring it out for Halloween. True. It's kind of how there's a cult following for their Haunted Mansion, mm -hmm. arguably even in the same class as Gritty Fairy Tales. And while. They'll never not have that ride, I don't think. Mm -hmm. They only seem to really bring attention to it and celebrate it during the spooky month. Ugh. Always be spooky. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I watch horror all year, so I don't care. Um, but back to my point on the writing of this, or of these movies in general. Mm -hmm. I kind of, it felt like, it felt very twilight -y to me. And the I, fact that... I can see where you're going there. Yeah, it, it feels like it's because these movies are generally meant for children, they don't want to take it to that next level, like Deadpool took uh, comic book movies to an R rating. Mm -hmm. They're just, they're missing that. Like, it just... Yeah. It feels very teen melodrama bullshit, especially when I was watching Red Riding Hood, they're like, oh, the two love interests. I mean, arguably, they completely changed the story of Red Riding Hood, Made it a little more interesting, but it still had that very twilighty yeah. feel to it. The teen, the uh, young adult novel feel. The, the young angst. Yes. Yes, and I would agree with you, but I would also argue that that is why the cult following for some of these movies mm -hmm. is the way it is, because I will agree that the writing for all what ten movies I have on my list here in front of me and Twilight. Definitely. And other ones like it, because let's be real, I also watched many of these shows and movies growing up. Mm -hmm. The reason why I watched them, though, was for that writing at all. Mm -hmm. Example, the newest Mummy movie, which I know you haven't yet seen. We're going to have nope. we're going to have a group night where we all watch it because at least two other of our friends are also into this type of writing style with me. Um... Let's just say that it's not good. No. <laughs> but the amount of teen behind a computer writing a fanfic that I could feel vibing from my TV was off the charts, and thus I liked it. Yeah. And I think I think that's the detriment of the genre, though. Sure. Is that because it, if it gets to a little too darker, it falls into the horror genre. And arguably, if something's labeled a horror, there's a lot of people who won't see it. Mm -hmm. Most just because of the label horror, even yeah. if it's not that scary of a movie or even a very good horror movie. But yeah, I, there's lots of people who would miss it completely. Yeah. And so they don't want to be a horror movie. But they also don't want to be just the fairy tale. Yeah. It's like whenever I see... Uh, a rough idea for a movie come up on IMDb and then it's like oh this is really good they show some snippets and like oh this is gonna be bloody this is gonna be great and then they slap a PG-13 rating on it and I'm like uh, it's not gonna it's I'm, not gonna hit yeah exactly yeah there's there is only a handful of movies that I would argue do their writing in such a way where they don't feel like that. Mm -hmm. And all of the ones that I can think of that do that 
are either arguably a little bit too shiny, example, the gritty Disney ones, where specifically Disney's behind them, or they are completely original concepts with a very loose fairy tale background. Or just kind of mashup of everything like Brothers Grimm. Exactly. So with, I mean, we've talked about quite a few of these movies. How does Shrek, going back to our uh, all-star series, Mm -hmm. how does the... Does Shrek really fall into a gritty fairy tale? This is this is the weird part for me. Because by all of the definitions that we come up with, mm-hmm. yes. Purely based on definition. However, if we do the thing where most subgenres come from, which is you find the ultimate version of that thing mm-hmm. and then compare it, Shrek doesn't really vibe the same way that Brothers Grimm or even Maleficent does. But it's so close. It is. It's one of those ones where, again, it goes back to what the spectrum of gritty is. Yes. I think that's the biggest hindrance in this. Yeah. I would argue that if we were, as an entirety of lovers of this genre, Mm -hmm. to be willing to move our entire concept of the genre to a full spectrum... Where everything is technically on it, and you just have to decide where it is on the scale, Mm -hmm. then yes, Shrek definitely does, but I would argue that it is more of an entry-level movie for a younger person. Yes, I completely agree with that. Shrek is definitely a children's movie. Oh, definitely. And it just... It, it It's missing that little bit. The, again, going back to the other ones and my issue of why I don't per- personally find them gritty... It's missing that something to make it to that level. And I don't, that's the thing is, I don't want it to be taken to that level. Yeah, no, that's part of the reason why this mm-hmm. subgenre exists at all. I would argue, though, that part of the reason why I'm counting Shrek as a gritty fairy tale, along with all of these other movies that are also kind of like a gritty fairy tale, mm-hmm. even though that Shrek is arguably completely different than all of them on every basis, is because. Shrek knows what it is at its core and has accepted it in its entirety. So Shrek knows that it's A, a children's movie, first and foremost, and then it knows that it is a fairy tale and it knows that it is gross and funny for adults. Yep. And because it accepts and fully embraces all three of those things, it has done something that all of these other movies couldn't do. Yeah, and I I think that's that's the big issue is that they just don't commit to it. It, and it is a hard thing to commit to because like we've seen with lots of other, uh, even just normal children's fairy tales, mm-hmm. it is very difficult to fully commit so much to your concept that you've reached another league without fearing failure. Yeah. And I mean... And yeah. arguably, arguably not all of the movies that are in the sh- subcategory gritty fairy tales are fairy failures but they're not hollywood success stories either yes they just um, did okay yeah and i mean one movie we haven't mentioned was uh and what what kind of spurred this on too was uh i i went and saw gretel and hansel oh that's right and arguably i would say that's a gritty movie that falls heavily in the horror genre it's definitely a horror movie but i would say it's definitely gritty it, yeah, it's gritty, but it's lackluster in being a movie in general. Sure. Um, but then we get Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters. Okay. And that's what started this. Th- that is what started this, because I unashamedly have a huge love for mm-hmm. Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters. Specifically, for those of you who aren't placing this movie, it's the one <laughs> It's the one where Hawkeye from the Avengers is back in time in ye, old, ye oldy times <laughs> fighting witches, still with his bow and arrow, but he also <laughs> he also has old-timey diabetes. Diabetes. Which is like a weird subplot, but no one can let it go. Like, once you've seen this movie, it's not that big a part of the movie, but you can't let it go. You can't unsee it. You can't forget about it. I don't know why it's in this movie. It's a stupid part of the movie is why people love it. But arguably the whole movie is stupid. But I would argue that Hansel and Gretel Winch Hunters, while Brother Grimm is arguably did much better mm-hmm. than that movie did, and is arguably the shining pillar child of this category, I would argue that Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters did it better. 
I agree with that too. Because I, they committed a hundred and ten percent. Yeah, they, and they granted knew, that's why it's bad, but <laughs> they knew exactly what they were. They knew exactly what they were. They cast for that as well. And while Brothers Grimm on paper did everything right, mm-hmm. and it did well enough, and it has a cult following behind it, it's too good. It's not dumb enough to <laughs> be a gritty fairy tale. And I think that's where we differ is you want it to be dumb and stupid, but I want it to be that little bit more clever than they are, than they are. Yes, but there's also a piece of this, and we're going to get to this later in our um, schedule, la- later down a couple more reviews. Mm-hmm. There is a little nugget, and I hate this nugget, and I hate that I love this nugget, but it is required for me, and I think a lot of people, to get a cult following for this gritty subcategory. It needs to have the it needs to have a world built where it doesn't explain the whole world Mm -hmm. and it leaves you needing a sequel not so much so that you're completely disappointed and the movie is ruined but a good example is the difference between the endings of brother Grimm and the hansel and gretel ending brothers Grimm ends but you don't care that it's ended you're not worried about the rest of the world and you don't really you're not thinking about how the adventure could continue because pretty much they addressed all of the major fairy tales in the mm-hmm. first movie. Whereas Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunter, they show you 50 plus witches from all over the world and then they end the movie head in the desert to fight a different witch Yep. who is arguably completely different than the one they just fought. And so my, my thing with that is it reminds me of horror films yes arguably the shit ton of sequels that get made off of horrible horrible movies the specifically the horror sequels Mm -hmm. if they toned down the horror even just a little bit a lot of them would fall into this category yes exactly yeah yeah agreed it's the slight need of a sequel and just enough plot holes and world building that keeps you invested even though you know you're never going to see anything else from this ever again. Mm-hmm. And I think that is why there is this subgenre at all. And I think this is why there is a love for this subgenre. Because it opens up for the audience and those with enough creative time and effort to create more for themselves. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um So, Chris, I want to close off this spotlight with a question. Okay. Out of this list, Mm -hmm. besides Brothers Grimm (laughs) and uh, Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunter, Sure. What one of these movies would you say is a definite watch for this genre? That's a really hard question, because Mm -hmm. I love them all, and they are like little chick children to me, and I cannot pick. But... If you haven't seen it, because this was something I hadn't seen. I missed it because it was too spooky for me as a kid. If you haven't seen Sleepy Hollow, or if you haven't seen it in a very long time, it is worth a rewatch. It's so good. It is Tim Burton. So, you know, set your eyes for some grays and blacks. German expressionism in it. Very much so. The aesthetic. Get ready for some real sleep-deprived looking faces. But it is... A arguably more artsy version of the gritty fairy tale without being gross. Okay. Yeah, I, I can see that. Um, it's a good time for the whole family, except for very young children, according to my mom. <laughs> I there There's a few of those movies for me. James and the Giant Peach. Ooh, that's a good one. I was not allowed to watch it. I asked my mom about it recently, and we think she got that and Nightmare Before Christmas mixed up. See, but I can also see how she wouldn't have. I was not given any rule. I think my mom actually encouraged me to watch James and the Giant Peach, (laughs) which would explain a lot. But yeah, no, especially if you were, as a kid, scared to watch James and the Giant Peach, as my dear husband is, rewatch it. It's great. It's beautiful. It also has a cute little cameo of Jack the Skellington in it. Yes. He's the pirate captain under the sea. (laughs) Yes, he is. Um... Personally, for me, I think the one that came closest to me actually really enjoying it was Snow White and the Huntsman. Oh, yes. Because yes. it was 
it it just towed that line. If it had been a little bit more violent, and I, well, not violent because it parts of it were pretty violent. If it had, it it just needed that little something more to it, and I. I have it to needed, go back and rewatch to figure out what I think that little something was. It needed just a little bit more to bump the rating, mm-hmm. and then it would have hit it for you. And not, not even bump the rating, just something a little bit more to it. I okay. I can no, I can see it. Yeah. I, I also really like that movie. I meant to watch the second one. Haven't gotten to it yet. Neither I, have I. I will though. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, no, I I can see it. it. That one is a very it's a solid choice. Mm-hmm. What is the one um that you would say no one should watch whatsoever? Hmm. Ne- never watch. Yeah. What What's the one that you could definitely skip, even if you like this genre? Mine is the live action Pinocchio. I don't classify that as gritty, though. I do because of the color palette and the adult topics in mm. it. I would, but it it. I can see how some people wouldn't. So for me, from what I watched, I'm torn between Red Riding Hood and Jack the Giant Slayer. Fair. I would probably say Red Riding Hood because Jack the Giant Slayer has Ewan McGregor as this just it, yeah. gung-ho it's, for the kingdom. Yeah. It it falls into my my love genre of this is real dumb. Yes. Whereas Red Riding Hood was too twilighty for me with the love triangle and Fair. all the bullshit that came with it. I mean, uh, Gary Oldman was great in it. He's great in everything I've seen him in. Even oh. when it's not a good movie, he's the one that shines. Cause, Always. Oh, he's... Oh, hi, Charlie. He's Oldman. Um, so, thank you for listening. This has been the Spotlight series. They're little shorts. Yep. Stay safe. Have a good one. Peace.